to our Driven CRM Service Contract webinar. Today we'll be focusing on using service contracts in Driven for two purposes, both for uh, creating and established warranty or service type contracts and for use in recurring billing or memorized transactions as QuickBooks uh, calls them. Uh, Driven is capable of using both there. So, um, all, like all of our webinars, by the way, this one is a listen-only type of webinar. However, in that panel that you signed up in, there is the ability for you to ask a question. If you would like to type out a question, I will try to answer as many of those as I can during the webinar. Also, you should have attended or have some basic knowledge already of Driven, how to log in, and what a workspace, and what the difference in Driven between a customer or prospect, in other words, a qualified CRM contact, and a lead is within Driven. Because there are actually two separate tables of information where individuals are kept. And service contracts can only be created for individuals who have been promoted out of the leads database into that CRM area. So I cannot create a service contract established that for anyone who is a lead. They will need to be promoted first. Okay. During our discussion today, we're going to set up one of each type of contracts. We'll begin with our service tracking type of contracts. So let's set one here for Donald Duck at the Disney shop. Um, maybe, for instance, potential ways we might use this contract are Donald purchased a service agreement from us. That entitles him to maybe two hours of support every month for the next 12 months. Or he pre-purchased a block of time from us, a 10-hour block, that he's able to work off and use as he decides to use it. Both of those kind of cases, or if the customer purchased a product that's covered 100% for the first year of that product, those would be three occurrences where a service contract would need to be put in place for that particular customer to set up the rules of how that contract works. So with Donald's account pulled up here, I would choose in the bottom left-hand panel activity area that I want to create a recurring or service contract. So making that selection is going to prompt us to associate that to that particular contact at that customer. So I want to tie this to Donald. And then I give the contract a name. That name is going to show up in the different drop-down box areas when I'm applying this contract to a work order, for instance, or looking up the details of this contract. So this might be my 12-month service contract. We choose how this contract works. The first one that we're going to create here is a recurring um, type of service usage. Sorry, the bottom section here. So we'll do that one first. This contract will be used to track service-related charges, potentially hours per month, and et cetera. So we'll choose that option. I can choose both options together if I would like. This is something where I not only give that customer two hours worth of support per month, but I bill them for those two hours. The one contract could handle both of those functions. Now, there is also a more options feature down at the bottom of this menu, similar to some of our sales screens, where I could use this to repeat one of this customer's previous contracts or copy a contract number from a different customer if I have one. So that would automatically preset some of my options for me as whatever was established on the particular contract that I choose. We, however, will go ahead and start this one with a blank one, so I'm going to choose to save and create in my upper left-hand corner. And this brings up the details of my contract. Now, all contracts by default are started in a draft status, meaning that I am still putting together and assembling this contract. It is not actually an active contract that can get used yet. During the draft and pending approval statuses, you can still make changes to the coverage areas of how this contract is going to work. However, once you have made this contract active, you can no longer go back and change things in this center section here of how this contract is covered. So we'll leave this at a draft status for now so you can see what that looks like. The type 
is chosen here. We'll go ahead and use the modify list option to add some choices here because you can group or organize your different contracts together since you might have some mixture of recurring billing type contracts and service contracts. So this might be my warranty contracts as one option we'll add to the list there. Okay. Now I can, oh, I didn't wait for it to add it. So add warranty contract to the list there. Then we'll save those changes. Now that will be an option that I can choose in my drop-down list here. The valid from is the starting or beginning date of this contract. No work orders or services can be decremented against this contract prior to this date. And then we have a valid to date or the end date of the contract. Let's say it's a 12-month contract, so I'm going to pick the 20th and change the year to 2012. Okay, so after that date, this contract will get set to expired and no longer be able to have things applied to it. My description came over automatically. If and when the customer decides to cancel this contract, I have that information right here, and I can pick a reason why they canceled. Now, this contract here, we're going to set it to, to never automatically renew itself. That means it is never going to automatically generate another contract or a potential invoice. This is something maybe that is only available for the first year of this product. So I don't want it to renew, don't want it to automatically do any of that kind of setup. So I set that to never. Then in the bottom section here, we'll begin setting up the rules of coverage of this contract. So first two things that we must pick are rate schedules. When this contract is in contract, what is the rate schedule that applies, as well as out of contract. Okay. So first, we need to define and talk about what rate schedules are in Driven. Rate schedules I compare to a family of rates or a group uh, of um, service schedule, kind of. And examples of what might be used in here are maybe I have my on-site rates as one group here. So within my on-site rate schedules, I have two service type items associated to that. So if on-site as chosen as part of the in-contract rate schedules, when technicians are adding time to their work orders, they'd be able to see both of these labor items to add to that particular work order as covered under this contract. Okay. The other rate schedule that's already been defined here, which I just chose in the Modify List option and created the names, are called non-contract rate schedules. Okay. My non-contract rates right now, the only service item that is included there is on-site labor. Okay. They cannot get this services performed service type item when they are using that particular rate schedule. So what shows here in my rate schedules are all of my service type items that have been established within Driven. And I can pick and choose which ones apply to this rate schedule. So if I no longer wanted on-site in there, I really should have had regular services performed in there, I can move that around and rearrange that particular rate schedule. Okay. And we'll save that. So that is defining your rate schedule and so which things are available, which services can be chosen based on that rate schedule. Now I associate one of those two rate schedules to the in-contract rates. So here I would say, okay, when, the, when you're in contract under this work order, you get to pick from this group of rates. However, the technician has the ability to be able to say, you know what, this is not covered by the contract because you spilled something in it or you called us out for a programming question or something like that. So you're going to be out of contract for this particular service. And then I'm going to be able to see a totally different list of rates potentially. So there I would want to pick from my non-contract rate schedule. Maybe under your warranty, only phone support is covered. So you'd have a specific rate schedule for phone support. They could only pick from that particular service item. And then if it's out of contract, you're going to bill them at your standard on-site rates. So you'd set up a rate schedule for that. 
So that's examples of how rate schedules are used within Driven and how they're tied to a contract here. Um, then let's talk a little bit further detail about the rest of the setup here, whether or not a rollover is allowed for this contract. Because again, if this is the type of contract that renews every month, maybe you get your two hours per month, but if you don't use them, they can roll over into the next month if this is set to yes. If it's left at no, then when that contract renews itself, those remaining hours get discarded and you simply get a new fresh two hours available. That's where that uh, phone company rollover option is put into play for us here in our contracts as well. Now we define how the parts and or service items get covered under this contract. Okay, so our parts coverages under this warranty type contract for my 12 month service contract, maybe you get the first $500 worth of parts. So I put $500 and choose dollars in here. Then what would happen is as I add parts and supplies to a work order, as long as I add less than $500, it would not invoice the customer. So the first $500 would be free. Anything added above and beyond after that would charge the customer. The other option there was to be able to give the customer a discount. Okay, so you have a warranty contract. If we have to use parts for you, you get 25% off of any parts that need to be used during the life of this contract again. Okay. So we'll leave that at 25 and show you how that works on actually adding those items and using that on a work order. The service coverages are the labor that are going to be associated to those particular work orders. So when technicians enter technician time, that's a labor service item. And I can say that that is covered for up to, as I mentioned, maybe you get within this first year, up to 10 hours of time. Or again, it's a warranty type contract, so all services are covered 100% period. I could put in 100 and choose percent here, and then all service type items would be credited as free when it's linked to this contract. Now, I want to leave this one at a 10 hour contract so that you guys can see how time gets decremented from this and what happens when time is used associated to this contract. Okay. There's a provision here as well for being able to enter travel time and if that is covered as well because that might be a separate entry in here when you're traveling out to the client. Then the question of whether or not these charges get credited towards the contract because potentially maybe you invoice that customer even though they're covered under contract because they're getting a discounted percent as opposed to a true allotted time of hours for free. Um, so you have the ability to say that you do not credit the charges towards the customer, in which case they would still get billed, but it would be linked and associated to this contract for reporting purposes. So you could see how much revenue you generated on this particular contract. Um, so we'll leave that set to yes. A service discount percent would apply above and beyond once it starts invoicing for labor type items. So yes, you get to pick from your normal rates, but because you have a contract with us, you get 10% off of my normal labor charge. That's your contract agreement. So I'd put a 10% in the service discount coverages here, and it would apply 10% off any labor item that I pick when I'm a tech adding time. Our feature here for an after hours multiplier and a weekend slash holiday multiplier would multiply the number of hours times this factor when using it on the contract. Maybe if I'm there after hours, I charge you time and a half. So I'll multiply by 1.5. And if you call me out on the weekend, I'm going to decrement double time from your contract. So do that automatically based on the tech picking that it was after hours or that it was weekend coverage. Right. Rounding time associated to a contract would round that up based upon a number of increments. So maybe you bill in 30-minute increments or you bill in 15-minute increments or 10-minute increments, whatever. Then each time if the technician were to enter seven minutes, 
in this case, it would round it up to 30. And then or 31 minutes, you're rounding up to an hour. It always rounds up. Okay. And you can also define a first increment surcharge. And this I kind of compare to that plumber visit fee, where uh, if, if you call us out, the very first 30 minutes that were there, okay, so I put in a 30 here, and I would say the first 30 minutes are $200. So any amount of time that that tech enters up to 30 minutes would invoice for $200, no matter what service rate was chosen. Then the normal service rate would kick in for any additional time after that 30 minutes. I'm, I'm going to leave this set to know that, but though, because I want to show you guys how the particular things get invoiced and how they get credited. Whether or not overtime charges are even allowed on this particular contract, if that is set to no, then you don't have the option to do the after hours or weekend option. And last option here is whether or not you need to identify a retainer fund account. This is in the case where you're doing accrual-based accounting and you've accepted this money for the 10 hours up front. You need to put it into an accrual account in your QuickBooks file. Okay. If you have need for that, you need to identify that um, retainer account here where it needs to get deposited to in QuickBooks, in other words. So, let us now, now that I've filled in my entire contract and set it up for my coverages, I'm going to change its status to an active contract so that I can begin using it. Okay, and we'll save changes there. So now, when I go back and look at Donald Duck's account, if I go on the left-hand side to his contracts and recurring area, I see that they have a 12-month service contract that's valid from July 20th of this year to July 20th of next year. I also can see under my visible columns how that contract works. So in here, I'd be able to see what the service coverages are. And I can also see how much of it's been used, what parts coverages are, and what parts have been used. Okay and how much time is still remaining. I'll say I show all those options here. So now I'm going to be able to see that set. Uh, we did parts usage as a 25%. So right now I have 20, 10 hours remaining on this contract to be able to use. Okay. So anytime a new ticket is open for the Disney shop now, You've established the contract. Your techs are going to come in here because Donald's calling to say a piece of equipment is broken. So they go into Donald's account here. They would say that they want to start a new work order. They'd pick a contact here. Donald is the one who's calling. And the very first thing that's requested is, is there a service contract associated to this work order? So I'm going to be able to see if there's a contract established, I always have two options. I have the none and billable option, which is if they don't have any contract, then I'm going to be flat out invoicing them for this. Or if I want to apply that to their existing 12-month service contract here. So I have the capability to do that. So I'm going to choose that as a contract that's going to apply to this particular ticket. And now you will see that I have a contract associated to that. Oh, I didn't add any contract notes. We'll come back in a moment and add what we call notes or comments on that contract, and I'll show you where that shows up. Now, you fill in the rest of the information here, which we get into detail during our service webinar on how to fill that in, what information is in here. Not required, though. I can simply say um, new equipment. broken. Okay. And I can say the screen is broken. When they received it. Come. So as a tech, I'm opening it, I'm opening it to a 12 month service contract, I press the save changes button. 
boom, the ticket's created. Okay. Now, one of your techs would be able to come in here, look at the contract details, and see that, okay, what's covered in here is you guys get 25% off parts and 10 hours worth of coverage. Okay. And here is where I'd go put my comments or notes. So where this is where you could establish what we call the rules of the contract for everyone to see. And I could say this contract covers phone support only. Twenty-five percent discount applied to parts. Okay. Clean up my spelling a little bit here. And we'd save that. So I can save the details of the contract information right there from that work order ticket. Now, what happens is your technicians are going to go record time or record parts on this. So here, I would choose to record technician time. I'm going to say that I was there today from 12.30, let's say, until 3 o'clock. Okay, so I was there for two and a half hours. It assumes I'm the tech doing the work because I'm the one logged in. So it's going to calculate for me that the billable time on that is 2.5 hours. And you'll notice that I get to pick from service rates because there were two service rates associated to that in-contract coverages. So I can see, I can either bill them at the on-site labor rate of $200 or the services performed $125 per hour. So I will choose services performed here. Now, even though it does say $125 per hour here, because on the right-hand side, this apply towards contract is set to yes, it's going to credit that dollar amount back to the customer because they have a contract established, and this is being decremented from the contract. Okay. Now, then the tech puts in their notes. They can say they went on site to fix screen. Okay. And they would save that. So what happens here, if the techs are going to look at the invoice tab to see what gets charged, is they can see that service item in here for two and a half hours of service would have normally been $125 per hour. So my subtotal would have been $312.50. However, that was applied towards the contract. So the total balance due to the customer right now is zero. And if anyone goes back and looks at the contract details now, they're going to see, okay, services used were two and a half, and they have 7.5 hours remaining on this contract. So those get handled and decremented automatically based upon when the technician goes in here, records their tech time, if it is set to apply towards the contract. Now, maybe while the technician is there, they also ask him about something else that's not related to the contract. And they need to record that time and invoice that time. Well, in that case, the tech would say, OK, from 3 o'clock, I was still there until 4.30, which is an hour and a half. I need to say that I need to pick from the list of out-of-contract schedules, because this service was not covered under the contract, and I do not want it to apply towards the contract. So I set both of these, and then I can see the only labor item available in the out-of-contract rate schedules were services performed. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And I'll um, put in my details here. Also cleaned another machine. Um, so we'll save that. Now that individual service entry, if I go back to my invoice tab, shows here as well, shows that there was no contract applying to that. It was 1.5 hours at $125 an hour. 
So I am going to invoice the customer for one eighty-seven fifty for that service performed. Okay. And going back again to look at the contract details, it did not decrement from any of the pool of hours of time for that particular customer. So then the last option for you here in this work order associated to this contract was that case of I gave this customer a 25% discount on any parts that were used. So we had to replace that screen or something, or we had to use additional parts while we were out there. Your technicians would do that as recording parts and supplies on the work order. So they would come into here, and they would say that they used a new mouse. I have a mouse in the system. It has a price of $10. That is its normal retail price to basic customers. I charge everybody $10 for this mouse. Um, the technicians would not have to know to modify that. All they would do is say, OK, yes, I used a mouse. They'd save that change. Oh, I have to pick which warehouse. Sorry, I have multiple locations or warehouses where I keep this product. We're going to pull it out of California. Okay. And when they go back to the invoice tab to check again here, I can see that there's an inventory item that is tied to the contract that was one mouse. It should have been $10, but because of their discount, they got $2.69 off of there. So they got charged $8.06. Okay. So that discount applied itself automatically to that part based upon the rules of coverage of that contract. Okay. Now, um, customers would, so let's say this ticket's been resolved, issue's been closed out, I'm going to need to go back. <clears throat> First of all, I never accept a responsibility for this ticket, so hold on, let me assign the ticket to myself. We'll save that, and now I'm going to go close out the ticket. So uh, that's all the techs have to do. They're going to see that's going to generate an invoice to the customer for $195.56 is the total. They finalize that closeout, post over to QuickBooks as an invoice, ask them if they want to set a follow-up. Okay. What happens now, so that particular one's been closed. Donald calls back in three weeks from now and needs something else to do with that particular warranty contract again, needs to call you out again. So you create another new work order there. Okay. I'm going to create this one to Donald. I'm going to say machine is broken again. Come fix it. Come. I again pick a service contract related to this. This is going to be linked to a 12 month service contract. Now I see here this contract covers phone support only. So I could say, hey, Donald, you know this covers only phone support and you get 25% off your part. I could make him aware of that at the time of him calling in, provided that those notes were put under that comment area of the contract. Okay. So I tell Donald, thanks, your work order number is 100,016. Somebody will be working with you shortly. Okay. As I record technician time, okay, again, I'm going to say that I was there from 7 a.m. this morning until 5 p.m., that's going to calculate 10 hours of time I was on site based on my in-contract rate schedules and it being linked to this contract, I pick the appropriate service item. So I'm going to pick on-site labor this time. And I would say I had to rebuild the whole machine. And that's why it took 10 hours. Now, uh, that's all the tech does. They enter what time they started, what time they stopped, and they save it. The contract is going to handle the fact that not all of that is covered under what you had available for your contract. Because your price was $200 an hour. Well, only 1500 of it was covered by the contract. So the additional $650 
is going to be invoiced to the client. Okay? Because they have used up all of their allotted contract time. So they went over contract. System invoices for that automatically. The technician didn't have to know how many hours they had left or how to enter it or what to do with it. Okay. And remaining moving forward as well, any other entries linked to this contract can still be associated to the contract, but they're all going to invoice because all the hours have been used up. A lot of flexibility for you there in setting up the rules of how the contract works to make it very easy for your internal people to simply do their work without having to know what the rules of the contract or how the contract works. They simply go in there and say that they want to open a ticket, put on their time. Okay. And now I can see in the contract that 10 hours have been used and there's zero time remaining. Anybody can see that on Donald's account. So that is using our service contracts for service type billing and potential warranty type setups. Let's now talk about the other option I mentioned, which is to be able to create recurring billing type contracts, or as QuickBooks calls them, memorized transactions. What we do there is let's use a different customer. Let's use Mickey Mouse from Disney World here. So Mickey Mouse has an agreement with me that I'm going to ship them two keyboards a month, every month for the next 12 months. And they keep running out of keyboards, they need them restocked every month. Or two hours worth of services that I'm going to invoice them for every month. Either way, this again is going to be set up as a recurring service contract. So we'll select that option. We'll pick a contact there. This is going to be Mickey Mouse. And I put... Um, monthly support and parts contract. And this contract will be used to generate a recurring invoice. So that invoice is going to happen on a regular basis. And it's set to do monthly. It can also set to automatically charge a customer's credit card for payment options if I'd like for it to. So we'll set that to yes as well. So you can see how those options work. Now, I can also set it up to track service-related charges too if I would like to. I'm not going to set this one to do that though. So I would save and create that. And again, I'm set into a draft status, so I'm still setting up the rules of how this contract's going to work. It is set to automatically renew monthly every month. If you have a different schedule than the ones you see here, because you can do never, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually. So in a case of bi-monthly, or you know what, I do it every month, but I'm not going to inv invoice you for August. You get to skip the first month or something. You would be able to uncheck specific months and it would skip that month in the monthly billings. Okay. I can pre-establish when the first date I want this to start renewing is. Okay, so I don't want this to renew until September the 1st. I can put that in here as the next renewal date. If you leave the next renewal date blank, then it will renew itself one calendar month from this originating date. Also, rules about how and when this contract renews. It's going to continue to invoice every month until the valid to date. So if this is a yearly agreement with this customer, I only invoice you for 12 months, then I would again want to say that this contract is only valid to maybe the 21st of next year. Okay. Then this will stop creating invoices at the middle of July of next year. If you want to have this continuously invoice and never stop, then leave your valid to date blank and empty. And then it will continue to invoice until you come in and expire the contract or set a valid to date, change the rules of coverage somehow. Um, 
for this one. Now I'm also going to say it needs to automatically generate an invoice for certain items within Driven. So here I would add the particular items that are going to get invoiced. This can be a mixture of both services and parts in here. So I choose Add Line Items, and I go find my keyboard. So there's my keyboard. I'm going to invoice for, I said, two of them. And I can specify the price when it's associated to this. Yes, my normal retail price for a keyboard is $5. But since you're going to buy two a month every month from me, I'm going to give it to you at $3.75 each. <coughs> And I can put on a note on here where I could say, this is our monthly keyboard supply. And I would save that particular line item onto here. So keyboard got added at 375 with a note on there. Right. If I mention, as I said, I invoice for services as well, I'm going to add a service item. Okay, so there's my services performed, and we'll put two of those on there. And again, at a discounted rate, maybe $115 an hour. Okay, we'll save that. So currently, an invoice will be generated every month for two keyboards at $375 and two services at $115 each. So my invoice total every month to the customer is $237.50 at the moment. Okay. I am set up to automatically authorize a payment to this client, and I can enter their credit card information here. So this will, now provided I've set up a credit card processor within Driven, will automatically charge that customer's credit card on that date for that dollar amount. Okay. So I need to enter all of the pertinent billing information about that particular card right there. We have an option because this is going to post an invoice over to QuickBooks to say that we need to mark this as to be printed yes, or to be emailed in QuickBooks. Okay. Now, I want to actually make this contract renew for you and show you guys what happened here. So I'm going to set the begin date for this back to June the 1st, and I'm going to set the next renewal date to actually supposedly think it's supposed to have happened yesterday. Okay. So. Um, again, rules of coverage, this has to be an active contract in order for it to actually begin looking at these rules and setting up the invoice options. Okay. And I will set the auto-authorized payment to no for now because I don't have any credit card information nor do I have credit cards set up on my particular settings. So we will save this contract. Okay. And it is set up anytime I look at Mickey's account under the contracts and recurring to be a monthly support contract here, and this is how it's set up to work. Okay. This next renewal date was set to yesterday. Now, I am an, my setup is an IPP type of a client, so I use Driven through the Intuit Marketplace, okay, meaning that any of my communications between Driven and QuickBooks happen under this Options and Utilities menu using the Intuit QuickBooks data sync. And this is going to check contracts, send things over to QuickBooks, and do that kind of stuff. If I am an on-premise installation of Driven, this action and looking at and reviewing the service contract scans happens automatically at midnight every night. So on-premise type customers will not have to go through this step. But if I am a IPP type customer, I will have to come in here and scan through the contracts to be renewed. So I'm going to choose Begin Scan Now. It's going to go through all of my service contracts that are in there and check to see if any of them need to be invoiced. Okay. So it completed successfully, and it's asking me if I want to view the pending transaction list because it went through and determined that something needed to be sent over to QuickBooks here, which should have generated a sales order for me here. 
I have two POs to be sent. Okay. And I'd process those over to QuickBooks. Now, in here as well, oh, I know because I didn't put a payment on it, so it's not ready to invoice. Okay. So that particular contract got looked at and reviewed. It got set under here now, under that contract for Mickey Mouse for the Disney World here. You'll see the uh, contract. Uh, those are my pipelines, 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 sales orders. Here we go here. Where is my sales order for Mickey? Let's go find it under his account. So Mickey Mouse from the Disney World. When I go into his sales purchasing menu, I'm going to see where are my dates on here. I should have an invoice for my $237 for my contract. Let's go look at my contract here. It didn't renew itself. Why are you not renewing? You're active. You're not set to do that. You are set to renew yesterday and generate an invoice. Apparently, I didn't see that it needed to renew that contract yet. Let's go run through that one more time here. I don't know what's up here, guys. It looks like, let me set my contract to have renewed last week sometime way earlier here. Because I should be able to scan these and have it go through and actually create one. I don't like that it's not showing me my uh, details here either. Let me see if something happened during that sync notes when it was creating that. Do a QuickBook sync log here. No, nothing's happened lately. Okay. All right, nothing got created. So, or at least nothing that needs to post over to QuickBooks. Let's go look here. See if an order got generated. No, it did not. Okay. Believe that might be an error on my IPP setup here where it's not generating that. However, that should have been one of the things that I wanted to cover there was what the invoices look like and how those work. Um, if I go to my service contract area here, I'm going to be able to see all my active contracts. Valid from. This one was 6-1. And let me set this to today then. That's really the remaining portion of this that I wanted to cover was how those look and how they would get generated. Um, so I might need to do some uh, troubleshooting with my support people to see what needs to be changed there. Um, any questions so far right now regarding setting up a new service contract within Driven? And how to manage those or how to create those.
still not generating. Jeremy has a question. Go ahead and type it out for us in that question, Jeremy. I'll answer it if I can. Let me see if I can log into my local. Uh, Jeremy's asking, once the invoice generates, can Driven automatically email the invoice using a Driven email template? No, Jeremy, for those renewing type of contracts, those would need to be uh, sent to the customer manually or sent via that QuickBooks email option. So no process to automate that right now. Okay, I have a local installation of Driven here, potentially, guys, that uh, I'm going to try and create a contract for really quickly, see if I can't get it to renew for you and show you what that looks like. Let's create a contract for myself. Okay, so I'll create a recurring contract for myself to be used for billing monthly, no automatic uh, invoicing. I oh, need to put a, this is going to be subscription. Save and create. Into an active status. For this one, it's going to be set monthly to automatically renew yesterday. Let's say, again, the date of the contract start is going to be June 1st. No end date. We'll add some line items there. And I will search for, don't remember what part numbers I have in here, 30 gig hard drive. I'll do one of those for $50. Okay. And that 30 gig hard drive got added at $50 for this contract. It's set to renew monthly on July the 19th. So this is an active contract set up on my local system here. There is a program called our QuickBooks Connector, which I would need to run here locally. Hold on, let me find it. I don't usually run the connector here, so I need to make sure I've got it in the right area. Where is my QuickBooks connector? All right, guys. I don't have my QuickBooks connector installed on here either, guys, So, because um, I don't typically run this locally. Let me see where my 
database engine is yeah okay um it's called the QuickBooks Connector for Driven, Jeremy, so it's going to be a little bit different there. And I do actually still have Oasis installed on here, so they might be conflicting with one another as well. But it definitely does uh, install on there and run and maybe ah, again yeah, build a renewal template that's what I was I was afraid it would maybe that's looking at my uh, in, uh, Oasis database so any other questions then right now regarding our uh, service contracts. I'm trying to see if I could get that to show for you guys. Apologize that I can't. But that gives you the basic understanding of how our contracts work with and driven both for service tracking and or recurring billing type situations. We'll give you the ability to set those. Um, Jeremy's asking if new renewing service contracts show up on some dashboard when they auto renew. Um, if they are set, Jeremy, to automatically authorize a payment, then they go over as completed invoices. So they would simply get processed. You could create a workspace that would show those type of process transactions if you would like. If they are not set to automatically pay themselves, then they would be in our sales order area. So they would be here in Driven under your open orders area. Any other questions then today regarding our service contract billing and setup of that? Okay. Well, thanks everyone for attending today's webinar. As I mentioned, we do offer um, all our webinars on a regular basis based on that training calendar schedule, so you're more than welcome to attend them at any time. Thanks and have a great afternoon.